hi there, and welcome to Beethoven of the Ukulele, episode 3.5. This is the fifth page of the third movement of the Pastoral Symphony, transcribed for solo ukulele. And I am in day two of an enforced stay-at-home order in Denver, Colorado. So we're not to go anywhere except maybe to walk our dog, get some exercise, or go get groceries. Or thank God we can still go buy liquor and marijuana here, because that's, you know, I was worried about that. But uh, uh, yep, we're hunkered down in place, as I'm sure a lot of you across the globe are right now. So what I wanted to do right now is just show you a little bit about Zoom, which is a video conferencing software that I've been learning to use in a baptism by fire because all of the classes I teach at Regis University and at Front Range Community College have gone online now, and we're going to facilitate these by using Zoom or in the case of Front Range WebEx, which is essentially like Zoom. So let me show you my screen right here so you can see what I'm looking at. Some of you might use Zoom before, and some of you might wonder how to use some of the features of it. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to share my desktop so you get in um, a nice view of my world. Welcome to my world on my computer. So this is what my computer looks like. Here's the zoom window. And let me just go through a couple of the settings here so you can see how this works. So over on the bottom on the left hand side in the left hand corner right here is the microphone. This is coming through my lapel microphone right now, which I'm hoping is going to be a better quality. But if you look at this up arrow right here, you can change to whatever microphones are on your system. So I'll do it here. Now it's recording through the microphone that's in the webcam, which is probably a little less quality than the microphone that's my lapel microphone. This is the microphone that's in the laptop itself that this is running off of, and the quality there is not quite as good. So I'm going to use my lapel mic for the rest of it. So there we go. So my lapel mic is what's being used for the uh, audio here. Um, for the video, you have this symbol. It looks like a camera. You can stop the video, so now you don't see anything here. And then you can turn the camera on. With this up arrow, you can select whatever cameras are connected to your computer. I'm using a webcam. This is a Logitech C920 webcam that I bought just a couple of days ago because I figured I would need a camera that's a little better than the camera that's in my computer. So let's go with that for a second so you can see what that looks like. So my computer's over on that side. So you can see that the, the quality is not quite as good in that uh, camera. It's a little fuzzy and so on. So we're gonna go back and use the webcam. Okay, so a couple of other things that you might see here. You can use this to invite somebody to come and participate in your particular call. You can copy the URL and send it to them and they can join you in the call. So I use this a lot for lessons that I teach. This has a list of participants. I'm just recording this by myself, so I'm the only participant at this time. Okay, this one is an important thing for what I'm gonna be doing today. So I'm sharing my screen right now that includes my entire desktop with the Zoom window. And it took me a while to figure this out. But if you wanna share and show the window, let's say you're doing a Zoom call and you're trying to teach Zoom, that's kind of meta right there. So you're trying to teach Zoom with a Zoom call, you would go down to the icon down at the bottom of your screen. You can see right there it says Zoom, I hit that. Or you can go to settings, you can access your settings in a number of other ways. Okay, so what I'm doing here, this is my settings window, there's me. I click that, go down to settings, and that gives me a list of all the settings. In general, what you wanna do, if you wanna share your Zoom window so people can see your Zoom window, is go down about halfway through this list right here. So I'm hitting general, then I go down about halfway through, and the box that says show Zoom windows during screen share. You wanna make sure you check that so participants can see your Zoom window. All right, and the other thing that I find is useful with Zoom is to have whatever you're going to share loaded up before you start the call. So I have a couple of PDFs that I'm gonna share with you right now. I'm gonna share them both on the screen, you can see this is a page, this is the full page five of the score 
of the third movement of the Pastoral Symphony. And that's what I transcribed uh, this week. So this is the original score that I was looking at when I transcribed it. Um, and I'm sharing this, and you're seeing my entire desktop right here. And I'll go down to these that I've preloaded. This is my handwritten uh, transcription that I did. I can't believe I did that almost a year ago. So you can see that I did that on the 27th of March, and that was in 2019. And so we were circling around, and it's, it's been like a year now, and I've finally gotten around to doing the video, editing it, and doing the video. So that's what my handwritten manuscript looked like. And then here is the Sibelius transcription. And so if you're on my email list, which go ahead and get on my email list. There's a, a link down below in this video where you can sign up for my email list. And I send out a page of this every week. So the page that I sent out this week has page 3.5, third movement, fifth page, transcribed into Sibelius with the tablature. And then it also has my original handwritten version. And for this week, there weren't very many alterations that I made in this. It's pretty much the same as it was. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing this screen so you can see me on the full screen now. And what I'm going to do as I walk through this is I'm going to show you the different screens and you can kind of see not only what's happening in the score, I'll annotate a little bit of that as I play through it, but you'll also see in a little window, I hope, you'll see me playing it so you can follow along that way as well. So right now I'm going to go ahead and go back and hit share and this time I'm going to choose the first movement score so you can see that. So now you should see just this window in your page. And this is the score of the symphony. I downloaded this from IMSLP. It's the same uh, edition of the score that's in the Dover edition that I bought as a print copy. Okay, so what we can see right up at the top right here, and what I'll do is I'll annotate this a little bit, circle some things so you can see what's going on with some of these things. So right up here in the top system of the page, by the way, that's what you call a whole bunch of staves bracketed together. We call that a system. On this page of the score, there are two systems. There's this system and then this one down here. So in the top system, Beethoven is still in 3-4 time and we can see the instruments over on the left-hand side of the score. So oboe, there's clarinet, Fagotti, which is Italian for bassoon, that's the bassoons. Corni, which is the horn, the French horn. And then down here is the string section. So we have the first violins, the second violins, the violas, there's the cellos, and there's the bass part. Okay, so I played a little bit of this uh, last time, but you can see what's happening uh, here. So let me go ahead and I'm going to pull up the score for myself so I can look at that over here. So let me erase this. And in the first part of this, you can see that I'm in 3-4 time and the values are all basically quarter notes. Here's the second measure. Let me try that again. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop sharing that. And what I'm going to do instead is share my entire desktop. Okay, so what we can see, I'll put my zoom window way up in the corner so we can see that. And then we'll put the Sibelius transcription and the original score down here. So can everybody, hopefully everybody can see that okay. All right. Okay, so what we're looking at right here is the end of this trio between the oboe, the clarinet, and the French horn all together. Okay, so that's this portion of the score. And then over here on my Sibelius transcription, this is what I'm playing here and up to here. I didn't outline those very good. I'm still getting better with the zoom. <laughs> okay, so you can follow along with either one.
Here's the second line in the Sibelius score. Okay, so that's essentially the end of that uh, trio section that we were talking about a little bit last time. So let me erase that. Okay, and then as a transition into the next section, what Beethoven does is he marks... up he marks sempre pre sempre pre strato which means a little bit more stressed a little bit stronger okay so this is the part in my transcription that goes like this Okay, now at the bottom of the page, so this is the second system in the original score. First of all, the one thing you want to notice is that Beethoven changes the time signature. He was in triple time before, but now you can see there he's changed to duple time. So one, two, one, two. And you can see over here where I've changed the time signature as well. Okay, so what I'm playing here, that my, in my transcription, I essentially I'm playing with a couple of extra notes exactly what is in the first and second violins here. Although I've moved it up an octave because I wanted to keep the, the melody in the same octave every time. I didn't want to have to, when I got down to the B flat right here, jump up an octave. So I moved everything up an octave and I'm playing it up across the eighth fret. So this right here is simply an F chord played across the 8th fret. So 8th fret on the 1st string, 8th fret on the 2nd string, ninth fret on the 3rd string. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen that shape before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off on the 10th fret of the 1st string to the 8th fret, go to the 8th fret of the 2nd string holding down the form, and then I'm going to go to the 10th fret with my third finger, hammer onto the 12th fret with my pinky finger. So, whoops. Okay, so that is this measure right here. Okay, the next measure continues with that same idea. So again, it's just essentially decorating this chord right here, which is an F chord across the 8th fret on the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd strings. Okay, now here's something interesting happens, and I wrote here in my original transcription the same phrasing that is written in the violin parts. So right through here, you can see that I have this curved line that connects all four notes in the tablature here, these two notes, and these two notes. A lot of time that mark indicates a slur, either a hammer on or a pull off. But obviously in the case of this one, I can't hammer on and pull off everything. So what I do is I only hammer on, I'll just outline these in red, I only hammer on these three notes right here. Okay, so I play, I pluck this one by itself and hammer on these three. Okay, over here, obviously I can't hammer on or pull off between these two notes. So just a rapid thumb stroke that glides between the second and the first string. So it's going to look like this. Let me play that again. So 10th fret on the third string. 8, 9, 11, 8, 10, 8, 10. And you might notice when I put that whole thing together, so this will be 
the entire first line of the section where the um, time signature changes. It has kind of an, uh, an interesting folky kind of a sound to it. Um, Okay, and the folky sound comes from this note right here, the 11th fret on the second string. That is an E flat note. And those of you who know music theory, actually you can see it over in the score as well. E flat note right there. Those of you who know music theory know that that E flat note is not in the key of F. Uh, what Beethoven is doing here, he's actually playing this phrase in a mode. He's playing it in the uh, F Mixolydian mode, and that's why it has that folky kind of funky sound to it. So, okay, the next line of that is going to be just a literal repeat. So from 169 to the end of this line is a literal repeat. And then what I did over at the end of this page, my um, solution in the transcription was to, for this la the final measures of this page, the final bars of this page, transcribe the flute part up above, because that, to me, is the most prominent thing that I hear when I hear the orchestral rendition of this. So this line in the flute I have transcribed that down here. So that's this part right here. Okay, and what I'm doing there is I've, I've figured all that in a Campanella style. So you're holding a chord form for all of it. The first chord is like this. I have my index finger in a bar across the third fret all the way across. My second finger is on the fifth fret of the third string. My third finger is on the fifth fret of the second string. So that's the chord I'm holding, or that's the shape I'm holding. And then I play. That's measure 173 and 174. And then I go up to this shape right here. Okay, and that's going to be a full bar across the fifth fret with my first finger. My second finger is on the sixth fret of the second string. Okay, and then I'll go back to this chord. This is an F chord. And then play the sixth fret note. Then I repeat that. That's the final bar of page five. And then it repeats, the rest of the phrase repeats again on page six. All right. So I hope you find that uh, useful and interesting. And I should mention now that I'm teaching online pretty much exclusively. Who knows how long that's going to last. But if you're interested in taking lessons with me online via Zoom, like we have here, or via Skype, get in touch. There's some information in the uh, links below that you can get in touch. So I hope everybody is enjoying their time, hunkering down wherever you are. I hope you stay healthy maintain your distance, and so on. I will see you next time. Take care.